Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we return with round 2 of our F123 My Team Career Mode. Yes, we're back this evening once again. Of course, if you missed out on the video uh, that went live earlier on from Bahrain, go back, check it out. Certainly sets the scene here, ready for this all new series. But today we're staying, of course, out in the Middle East for the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. Of course, there will be spoilers in just a moment. So, you know, if you missed out on that first video, yeah, go back, check it out quickly uh, before we jump into this. But I just want to say a massive thanks to all of you uh, for the support so far here on F123. We're closing in rather quickly on 110,000 subscribers. I think I'm going to set the goal of 150,000 subscribers by the end of 2023. So if you're new around here and you haven't already, click that big red button. Make sure your notifications are on as well. Of course, we're going to be doing daily F123 videos until we win a world championship. And we've got some big upgrades as well coming onto the car this weekend now we might be doing daily videos until we win the f1 world championship uh it, it's gonna be quite a few more days bahrain was a little bit of a disaster to kick start the year max verstappen uh, leading the way in the drivers championship ahead of sergio perez and carlos Sainz. The, the timings had a little bit of a funny towards the end of the race i don't actually think we did finish last but the game seems to believe so and well who am i to argue uh with our f1 overlords but are we going to get these upgrades then on no. Could, couldn't even try to hype that up then. They, they just instantly failed. So we're going to have to try and spend some more R&D on trying to get those done. Hopefully still uh, they're going to be here ready for the Grand Prix still. We might even have enough R&D just to go for one more upgrade very, very quickly. I don't think we can. Um, yeah, we need to try and earn some cash uh, so we can do some facility upgrades as well then. But now, of course, uh, because that upgrade originally failed, pretty certain it's guaranteed to work now. Um, personnel department event. So what is going on? Fittipaldi has been hitting their stride in the simulator recently. While they're in the zone, where should we focus their development? Seven play, uh, pace or seven awareness? I think pace. He was strong in the opening race of the year. So we'll, we'll try and keep that up. Um... And you can see him. There we go. Getting some filming done with Enzo in the simulator as well. There are more R&D points being earned. And hopefully now we'll have that plank okay, upgrade as well ready the on box. the car. So all we'll good the in the hood. The you can see pushing away a little bit from Alpha Tauri there. Uh, looks like McLaren have made a big step forward ahead of Haas Williams and Alfa Romeo. But I'm hoping... With Saudi Arabia being such a power-sensitive circuit, I'm hoping this weekend it really does suit our car. I want to make it into Q2. must admit i always do enjoy it on a new f1 game you know when you're trying to go through the setups trying to work things out trying to discover those little tricks and things like that that you need to learn uh, that of course will help you throughout the entire game because of course at the moment i'm going out into every qualifying or every practice session sorry trying different things and sort of seeing what works and what doesn't but yeah saudi arabia has often been a happy hunting ground for myself in the past of course some major changes as well uh, introduced to this circuit Again, you know, because obviously the changes made in real life, there's some very aggressive curbs. Um, and again, of course, the, the proximity of the walls through this first sector will always be scary. You can't ride that curb anymore. I found that out almost immediately then. Uh, the, the curbs around here now are lethal, so be careful of that. Top end speed though against the Delta. Looks like we are still in a good shape. As you can see, of course, the moves being the walls, sorry, being moved back around some of this circuit of course just improving the visibility ever so slightly is certainly a very very good addition there yeah you can see once we get sort of up to top gear uh, we are gaining a little bit of time against the delta of course uh, courtesy of those extra ponies provided by those power unit upgrades so hopefully second time round we might actually be able to complete this challenge you really can't hit many of the curbs around this circuit anymore it makes you realize you know, how Mick Schumacher, for example, had that big accident a couple of years ago in qualifying here. It is not an easy circuit to really get nailed down when the curbs are raised like that. You just see it lifts up the front of the car, of course, you ground out over the plank, and then you're basically on a one-way ticket towards probably a barrier here in Saudi Arabia. But one more corner to go, then still breaking far too late. 
down at that final hairpin, but should hopefully be able to pull the delta back as we head up towards the start finish line. Can we be a bit cheeky and lift as well? No, only green score. Come on then, out of the final corner. Third time's the charm, surely. We're going to be right there again on the delta, but will it be enough on the fuel? Yes, it is. Purple score. That's the way we want to start this weekend. Our racing runs have historically in the past been quite easy once again here in Saudi Arabia. Looks like we are quicker uh, than Enzo as well. I can't wait for the first time I call him Emerson in this series. I know it's going to happen, but it's just a question of when and how often. But yeah, I, I do quite like Enzo Fittipaldi as a driver as well, of course. And his brother, you know, Pietro getting that two race in, in Formula One. I feel like, you know, it's nice to bring Enzo into the team as well then. But what are we going to be able to do on this first race sim lap? Again, Saudi Arabia now, I'll be honest, is a whole different beast with these adjusted curbs. You really can only put two wheels near them. Never mind over them is a thing of the past. Even then, it's still bottoming out. But luckily, we're able to keep the power down. i tell you what then, down in towards the final couple of turns, this has been as easy as one, two, three on our race simulation run as long as I get the power down at a turn 27 up towards the line yeah we're gonna smash this one out of the park two purple scores for two so far will we make it three in the qualifying sim run I'm trying to make sure I've got as much battery as possible then some catastrophic understeer through the final corner but honestly I like that I was in fourth gear then the car should understeer down in towards that final corner target time though 29-2 we're gonna have to get on with this three tenths down at the end of sector one but often sector one has been our weak point so far around the slap Charles Leclerc just in front of me hopefully he's not going to get in the way he's got to be so careful of the curbing around so many of the corners now it's definitely going to catch us out in the race but the real question is will it do it to the AI oh <laughs> dearie me Charles Leclerc how do you not spot me coming up behind you at 200 miles an hour there well there we go that is qualifying sim run ruined I've pressed the wrong button as well, because, of course, that was always bound to happen. Um, but, yeah, I suppose we may as well just get on then with the real thing. Thank you very much, Charlie Boy. That, that, should, be a, that should be a grip penalty, in my mind. Um, it won't be, but it, but it should be. Bahrain video, we felt like we were running a bit too much downforce here in Saudi. I feel like we might not be running enough, but well, I think not enough, just a lot less than the AI. And to be honest, I think around this venue, I'm not going to complain about that too much. It's all about high speed and high stakes here in the Saudi Arabian Jeddah Corny Street Circuit. First run in Q1 coming up. Let's see what sort of time we can do. It's definitely having to break earlier, uh, consciously earlier, into the corners than I'm used to. But it's all just going to be a question of getting the first lap dialed in, making sure I don't hit that curb. Still run over that one just about there. Definitely not the line I wanted, though. And now it's through here. You can really feel the ground effect working there. Just down one gear because, to be honest, I'm scared. I'm really, really scared of that curbing through there. But we've made it through nice and tidily. Now we've got to try and navigate the rest of the lap. The other good thing, of course, is we can't really qualify worse than we did last time out in Bahrain. But, I mean, yeah, Fittipaldi proved this car has got the pace to make it into Q2. So I'm hoping we can try and back that claim up tonight. Still having a break and even earlier than I'm anticipating through that final corner. But up towards the start-finish line, then what is the time going to be? Shortest run towards the line. Careful not to run over that white line. 29.6. 11th and 12th at the moment. Okay. Don't know how many cars have done a run now I've said that, but we're looking competitive. Yeah, that, that whole thing I said about looking competitive might might have come crashing down almost immediately. Three tenths up on Fittipaldi, but a good four or five tenths away uh, from being into Q2 there. 45 seconds left. We are going to have to go out for another very, very aggressive run. This time round, risks are going to have to be taken because we want to try and make it into Q2. The rest of our on currently in the drop zone as well. So other cars, I'm sure, will certainly be looking to improve here. And we saw in Bahrain just how much the times can improve by late on in a session. Track really does seem to aggressively rub in, I'm sure, especially around a non-permanent circuit like this. There's a big kick through turn three. Luckily, that was F122, it'll be over. F123, though, you've got a fighting chance as leaving in sixth gear. 
through there that time round. Nicely over the curbing on the exit, but honestly, our first set the last time round was pretty good. Just about whether we can find time elsewhere on the lap as qualifying then has come to an end. These are the final runs for everyone as we nudge up against the wall, still just in the red. And there is next to nothing between myself and our previous time there. Careful over that curb, that's cost us. You've got to be so, so careful over that curbing, unfortunately. And now we're going to have to absolutely send it as we make our way down in towards the final couple of proper corners of the lap. We have not got many places to gain a lot. And that is a lot of curb through there. Somehow, just so I get away with it, just managed to avoid bottoming out. But this is not looking good at the moment. It might be another Q1 exit for us. We push like crazy. One more corner to go. Just get the car into the apex. That was nice. Oh, no. Wobble on the exit. That's ruined it. It's over. We're going to be P19 then on the grid, ready for the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. That hurts, I won't lie. Well, there we go. Charles Leclerc, fastest in Q1 at 27.6. is a very, very good lap time by him ahead of Checo Perez and Max Verstappen. Are there any other major surprises? Oscar Piastri uh, could have probably done a bit better than that. Lance Stroll with a five-place grip penalty as well. Uh, so not too sure what he's done. But quicker than DeFries and Sargent. I suppose we can take that. And, of course, quicker than Fittipaldi uh, backs up my point about how strong the AI are in Bahrain, but it's another Q1 exit for us. We've got a lot of work to do here for the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. So here we are then, welcoming you today to one of the jewels of the Arab world, Jeddah, one of the biggest cities in Saudi Arabia, second only to Riyadh, gateway to Mecca, and one of the biggest ports in the region. And now, host to the Saudi Arabia Grand Prix. So let's take a look at the topographical map of the Jeddah Street Circuit. As you can see, a number of challenging corners for the drivers to master here. We'll see just how much the teams have benefited from their time spent in practice this weekend. And like many street circuits, this track has the potential to punish drivers that get it wrong. Let's hope we avoid any safety cars today. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. World champion Max Verstappen starts from pole position and it's Charles Leclerc in P2. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Perez, Hamilton, Sainz, Russell, Fernando Alonso, Ocon, Gasly, Bottas, Hulkenberg, Albon, Norris, Magnussen, Joe, Stroll, Oscar Piastri, Sonoda, Mr. Monaco, Fittipaldi, De Vries, Fittipaldi. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box, and it's fantastic to have you with us here, but I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into Turn 1, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It will keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. Right, here we are, though, ready for round two of the season from Sakir, then, and it Okay, it reckons we can already go quite aggressive on the strategy, so I'm absolutely going to try that if we get an opportunity. Of course, safety cars can absolutely change the uh, the races. We found that out last time out, even with red flags uh, changing things up quite aggressively. But what I need to do is make sure I'm putting enough revs into the car that we don't hit the anti saw That's what I've got to remember this weekend. No threat of rain for the time being. Conditions look good. I don't think I've ever done a wet race in Saudi Arabia, and to be honest, I'm, I'm not sure I ever want to. That, that's a good sign. Fittipaldi and I are now one for one in qualifying, so I'm hoping today we can make it one for one in races as well. Try and build up some temperature into the tyres, but I wonder if we're just going to be able to match the throttle off this start then, of course, because of the traction inside F122. Careful not to run into... F123, sorry. Um, oh, it said 0.0! .0. No! That has really left us on the back foot then, ready for the start of this Grand Prix, but waiting then on those five red lights. Lights out, and away we go, and again, just hitting the anti store but actually, it seems like Nick DeFries was the one getting a lightning getaway there. Sergeant down the inside of Fittipaldi as well, so it was a good job I didn't try and make it four wide 
into that first corner as Oscar Piastri patience has absolutely not played virtue for him down at turn one as he gets shuffled back down the roster as well then still side by side with Nick De Vries as we'll try and look nope nowhere going there around the outside of Oscar so just try and settle in then off the start again not a great one I was known on F122 for my bad start so I really don't want that to be the same story here if I'm completely honest but it is going to take me a little bit more work as sergeant then after last weekend deciding to go aggressive on the tyres this weekend has decided to go ultra conservative on the tyres then so not quite sure what his game plan is early on this afternoon but we've just got to try and ease the car in at the start of this race looks like Perez has got the jump on Charles Leclerc off the start as well then of course Red Bull I mean we will probably see him locking out the front row quite a lot this year so I was quite surprised especially around a street circuit that it wasn't Checo on the front row this time as you can see Piastri already right over Sergeant's gearbox Nick the wall okay, the start was fine. Let's I thought Mark was going to be telling me then about front wing damage it must have just been tyre face to wall contact but we get away with it Sergeant now like a rocket ship down the inside of Fittipaldi in towards the final couple of turns is he going to be able to pull off the move Sergeant then right from the back of the field might make it up to P18 by the end of lap one then despite being on those harder compound tyres Max Verstappen though rather unsurprisingly still leads the way at the front of the field but I mean yeah we've just got a lot of battling going on early on I just don't want to pick up any front wing damage there is contact between Fittipaldi and Sargent watch the paintwork mate come on Oscar though now having a look to the outside of Fittipaldi as well then so we definitely just can't get the run through the end of the S's here so it really is just going to be trying to use the speed around the second half of the lap to hopefully swing in our favour there as Oscar Piastri a ballsy little move there around the outside of Fittipaldi right through turn 12 as we try and hang close already looks like a bit of a gap opening up uh, between Sergeant and Joe Guan Yu a little bit further up the road there as you can see now straight line speed we have got in this car what we're capable of not going to go for anything risky far too early on in the race and of course our teammate yet to battle Fittipaldi properly in a race although he did help me out of course in Bahrain there as you can see again Piastri one way Sergeant defending from Fittipaldi who tried to go the other and in towards the final corner Nick De Vries really struggling early on uh, Charles Leclerc though clearly doesn't want to give up early DRS is about to be enabled then in this Grand Prix I mean look at the run we've got now Fittipaldi is going to try and go one side but we're going to make another triple overtake or attempt to not come on mate I'm there down the inside of Fittipaldi at turn one and just wanted to clearly cut me off there we're going to be side by side with our teammate as we try and make our way in towards the uh, S's again. And this time around, we're just going to have to slam that door. I don't like doing it to him, but needs must. And it wasn't something we got any use of last weekend, but DRS then now finally enabled in this race. So hopefully we're going to be able to try and close up to Sergeant once again then. But yeah, already a little bit worried. It seems like this final five of us have come in disconnected from the rear of the field slightly. As Sergeant again, the AI. Where did you like to aggressively block late when another car is trying to go for a move. We call that the Esteban Op online, I think, in recent races. But can we try and get a run on uh, Piastri out of the final corner? Yes, we absolutely can. Trying to make sure we're managing our ERS as best as possible. But look at that! Sergeant, he may as well have been stood still, mate. Up the inside, we'll go gather it up nicely down at Turn 1. And we are up another place then into P18. The lofty heights of P18. Joe Guan Yu, though, two seconds up the road. So we're going to have to keep pushing seems like early on in this race that we're just driving into a bit of a wedge here this is the problem of course we're losing a bit of time through the first sector just because of the lower downforce to try and help ourselves through this part of the lap but now of course with the AI just DRSing each other and clearly not afraid to go for moves look I knew Yuki Tsunoda keeps swapping over when I look up just above myself on your screens um, but yeah, we just can't get any closer as Piastri, Sergeant Fittipaldi still disputing P19 behind me. But yeah, just early on though, the gap's just floating around the three second mark. We need to go side by side somewhere. Um, there's maybe now actually looking on the mini map, they might have lost DRS to the cars in front. So we get towards one third's distance then in this race. Interesting enough though that it's both Ferrari cars. They're applying the pressure to Max Verstappen at the front of the field. I wonder if Checo has got some issues, but yeah, I was starting to make good inroads on Zhou Guanyu, Yuki Tsunoda, and now they seem to have closed back in on the cars in front of them. The gap's just floating still at around that three-second mark, so we need a... It feels like I'm in Bahrain again. I'm just praying that the AI 
start backing with each other more and more, or I get braver and braver through the S's, which, to be honest, that's that's as brave as I want to get. I thought that was about to jinx myself. Two and a half seconds up to Yuki now. That gap is all definitely starting to come down, but you can still see how hard we're pushing at the moment. It does just depend on what the AI do, and they want to seem to gang up on me early on inside F123, but unfortunately as well, I'm looking at the mini-map, seems like it's not even a gaggle that takes us all the way up to the points. It is just from about P18, sorry, P17 up to about P13 up there, so... And you can't have it all, but if we could get closer, that would be nicer. It's bottoming out over that curve again is so scary. More and more side-by-side -side battles. This is what I like to see. Go on, go on, go on. First cars into the pit lane then. End of lap 10 seems a little bit earlier than I would have expected, but it's going to give us some freebies. So team actually won us in though at the end of 11. Tires are definitely starting to go, but don't feel that bad as we get our first look at Sergio Perez in this series. In fact, yeah, tire wear warning light has just flashed up, so probably wise that we appeared at the end of this one. Would have been nice to get some slipstream and some DRS off the Mexican, but that is not going to happen. Sails off into the sunset. Ahead, now running tires. Acosta has got the bit between his teeth once again, starting to close in on myself as we get ready to box the end of this lap. Definitely think our car is not great on its tyres at the moment, but into the pit lane then here in Saudi Arabia. I'll be very, very careful, at least on previous games into this pit lane. Oh, that was sent. Well and truly licked the stamp and sent it into a pit lane there. Got to remember me buttons as well, of course, once again. There we go, optimal on that one. A little bit of frame rate issues in the pit lane. Not too sure what that was all about. But okay, let's get Back going the again then Perfect in this Grand Prix. Like very, very nice careful time. on the throttle. We're going to be down complete. in P21 then, so still not quite now. in last place. But uh, Yuki Tsunoda four seconds in front still. That gap just keeps moving around like F122 then. The AI absolutely come alive after they've boxed onto a fresh set of tyres. So maybe... We're going to struggle a bit more to close into that next gaggle. And now we've got Oscar Piastri for proper company. So unless we can try and use him to slipstream each other, work as a team towards the end of this race, which I'm not convinced he's really going to be capable of. He's going to have a look to the inside, though, is young Oscar. To the inside he'll go. Please give us some room, thank you. I mean, we'll take the DRS out of the final corner as it fouled the in the pit lane. Enzo is in the pits now. Formula 1 needs an Enzo. I think that's only fair, but... Yeah, should be back out ahead of him at least then. As you can see, the straight line speed we've got over Oscar Piastri. Try and move back over to the racing line. And yeah, we are going to re-emerge then in E19. Oh, Sergeant still hasn't pit, has he? Still waiting on Logan Sergeant into the pit lane then, but Magnussen on hearts. So he might be at a disadvantage towards the end of this. Yuki and Logan Sergeant. Sorry, Yuki and Magnussen even duke out further up the road. Sergeant... Hulkenberg and I'm guessing Zhou Guanyu in the pit lane as well and so we're actually going to be very very close to these cars as they head back out of pit lane and in fact right alongside Nico Hulkenberg in this race so we have been given a bit of a lifeline then we have gathered up some time over the Haas and the Alfa Romeo but it's whether they can drag us further up towards the end just see how free the AI are through that first sector they're able to absolutely nail it in a way that I absolutely cannot, as the back end really tried to kick out, I think, to be honest, at the moment. With the way Hulkenberg and Joe Ryan were going, the goal is probably just to try and hang around in their DRS as best as possible. There was Hulkenberg slip training outside of Joe down at Turn 1. Joe Ryan Yu clearly don't want to put up too much of a fight for it. 11 laps to go. It would hardly be a groundbreaking result, even if we got past the pair of them, but it would be a promising sign. It's weird the way the AI's pace seems to come on and fall off again. Oscar Piastri was all over my gearbox and he's now five seconds behind again. Just because he couldn't quite stay in the DRS. But yeah, Joe Guanyu again around the outside of Nico Elkenberg. So there's a big gaggle of cars battling a bit further up. That might be right at the bottom of the top ten there. As Hulkenberg again. Whoa! Yeah, ho oh, oh, ho, that was scary and I wasn't even a part of it. Berg again to the outside of Joe Guanyu as they definitely cars are slowing each other up a bit further in front. So this is actually working really nicely. In fact, yeah, that whole gaggle of cars is really slowing each other down then. So we are not going to be far away from the top 10 now in this GP, which seems weird to say down in P18. We're going to get absolutely boxed in though down at Turn 1. No Hulkenberg 
clearly more worried about myself than Zhou Guan Yu there, side by side as we go through. And now I've got a P17 then of this race, but I'm pretty certain, yeah, points are right there in this train, or a point, I think. Sonoda and Lando Norris duking it out just in front. You can see Zhou Guan Yu trying to look back past me as we wind our way through the final corner, but this time Aaron Hulkenberg appears to have lost the DRS in. I mean, again, look at the straight line speed difference between myself and the Haskar there. Sonoda and Lando side by side through turn one. Alvin, you can see side by side with another car a little bit further up, but I'm trying to work out. 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th. I think, I think the car at the front of this train is 10th, but I am now worried they're actually 11th. Oh, Lando Norris, bit of a lock up there, down at 1, and we're just going to try and not run into Laki Yuki Sonoda off the corner. Now, that's just allowing that little gaggle in front just to pull away a little bit more than I'd really want. Seven laps to go here. I mean, we're basically asking for the perfect scenario for us to still score points, but I want to believe really does seem like we've got the gearing absolutely nailed down on this car. Oh, Yuki, bit of a lock-up as well, running wide. Joe Guan Yu again trying to look for an opportunity off the corner, but this time around we're going to try and say thank you very much then to Yuki Sonoda. Lando Norris a little way up the road, but of course with the help of that DRS very quickly we're looking at the Art Trace logos on the back of that McLaren. Six laps to go. Joe Guan Yu, I think, getting a little bit fed up there. No, Mika Hulkenberg getting fed up with Zhou Guan Yu trying to find his way around. So it is all still going on later on in the day there, as that is not the line we needed. Come on. Oh, no. Now, now we're in trouble. We have lost the DRS to Lando Norris. I might just be able to get it back again, but I'm going to have to drain so much battery and really nail these couple of corners. I don't know if he's got within the range of the cars in front of him, but this is full deploy now as we try and close in that gap. I don't... I think he has... I think Lando Norris might now be within the range of those cars in front. So unless we can get back within the one second zone, which we might just have done. Doesn't look like it. We are now really going to be having to drive on our mirrors towards the end of this race. Yuki Sonoda, I'm sure, will try and get a run on me. We'll completely drain the battery as we head down towards turn one. But they're still fighting in front. Come on, believe. Albon and Bottas side by side there. They could be pivotal. Notice as well on the mini map, Max Verstappen now in his Red Bull behind both Ferrari cars in this race. So it could be a Red Bull 1-2 in the season opener, a Ferrari 1-2 here in Saudi Arabia. But yeah, we're just dropping back from Lando ever so slightly at the moment. Things are getting a little bit ragged towards the end. Just over four laps to go here in Saudi. And you can just see again Yuki Tsunoda trying to find a way around myself, but top end speed is still competitive. But are we going to get another window? That was scary. Almost put it in the wall as we tried to attack the curbs there. Yuki Tsunoda trying to find a way around me as well. I wonder if it's going to be worth trying to let him buy so he can close up on those other cars. But I think, to be honest, later on in the day, we just got to defend yellow flags out. Oh, that's Zhou Guan Yu. Zhou Guan Yu out by the looks of it, of the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, incredibly late on. So a heartbreak for Alfa Romeo then. He wasn't in a point scoring position, but yeah, not ideal. This early on in the campaign, Joe Guan Yu. Oh yeah, 22 laps survived here, but not the full 25. Albert and Norris now going side by side, back down in towards Term 1, but our tyres are absolutely going off here as well. And yeah, it doesn't look like Norris has got anything he can do up against that Williams at the moment. If they both dropped out of the DRS, then wonderful. Just because I'm trying to sneak as many freebies as I can, but yeah, at the moment, we're much more focused on Yuki behind. That is a lot of curve, but we got away with it. One more lap to go then, and you can see Lando Norris trying to again have a look around the outside of Alex Albon. Here goes Yuki Tsunoda, though, for the inside of myself through the final corner, and Yuki, as I'm watching that battle continuing up in front, we're going to get the DRS on him, though. Yep, we're absolutely going to try and win that place back immediately then as Ferrari look like they are going to be able to try and win the Grand Prix. I've got no idea which one of them is leading there as Lando Norris now slides around the outside of Albon down at Turn 1. But if we can just get one run on the Williams or maybe the Williams and the McLaren, I would absolutely try and take it here. It's just got to hang on through this first sector as best as possible. I think Albon not having fun on those hard tyres maybe has worked them too hard. And that's why he's dropped back. No! I hit the curb! I've gone all race 
Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know who I've almost rejoined in front of. That must have been Nico Hulkenberg. Just trying to get back on the road there. Right in front of the Haas car. And I cannot believe. I knew I was going to hit it at some point. But I didn't expect it on the final lap of the race then. But it might not be over between myself and Yuki Tsunoda to wind our way through. We, are, we know how quick this thing is down the straights. But again, I've nicked another curb just like we did in qualifying. And now we're really going to try and put to the test just how quick this car is down the straights. Carlos Sainz, his second ever Formula 1 Grand Prix victory there, wins in Saudi Arabia. Charles Leclerc, if I'm not mistaken, has brought home a Ferrari 1-2. Max Verstappen will only have to settle for P3 this weekend, beating out both of the Mercedes there. Checo Perez really did struggle as well, even behind him down in sixth. But one more corner to go of this Grand Prix. I think we're too far back behind Yuki Sonoda now to really be able to do anything. It has been a crazy race as always here from Saudi Arabia and we'll come through only for P16. Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. effort from the team and a magnificent drive to secure victory here at the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. Tell me, Ant, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? I think a large part of the result comes down to temperament. They were able to keep their heads when everyone around them was losing theirs, and that's allowed them to get the best out of the car, to maximise the strategy and to stay out of trouble. Looking at the podium, you can see that red suit, familiar to fans across the globe. A world-class win for a world-class team. Ferrari, do it again. driver's stand. The gap at the top of the championship has been cut down after a difficult race today for our championship leader. Let's focus on the driver of the day, Anthony Davidson. Who do you pick? Often my go-to would be a driver who's managed to pull off an especially impressive feat during the race. However, in this instance, I was more impressed by Max Verstappen's solid, clean driving throughout the event. Let's move on to the constructors. It was a tough race for our championship leaders who lose ground at the top of the table. I'm equal parts exhausted and elated with this weekend of Formula One, so be sure to join us for the next one. Well, there we are then, the end of the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, and I'm not quite sure how Verstappen gets driver of the day there when Sainz went from fifth to win, but there we go. Max Verstappen, though, did actually get Charles Leclerc right in the run to the line there, so Charlie Boy will only come through for P3. Hamilton ahead of Russell, Perez ahead of Gasly, Stroll beating out Alonso despite starting nine places behind him, and Esteban Ocon picking up another point for Alpine as well there. Further down the roster, though, 16th for us, six tenths behind Yuki Tsunoda. It was a promising sign. It seemed like the car definitely was a bit more competitive this weekend there. Fittipaldi as well, able to beat out Sergeant Defries, and Piastri must have had an issue to drop back so badly towards the end of the GP there. But it means championship-wise, Verstappen still leads five points down ahead of Carlos Sainz. Leclerc up into P3 ahead of Sergio Perez. There are George Russell, the ever-consistent George Russell in P5 out of Hamilton there. Alonso, Gasly, Ocon, uh, Norris, Stroll and Nico Hülkenberg are only scorers so far. Still in 19th place in the championship for us uh, but we are now ahead of Piastri and Sargent as well as Nick DeFries there so we can't complain too much but constructors wise though, sadly based on the count back we are down into last place there. Red Bull uh, beat Tank Ferrari, though, still at the top. Four points now. The gap between them as Mercedes now ahead of Alpine and Aston Martin. Uh, Aston Martin, yeah, behind Alpine is probably a surprise that they do not want to see all too often this season. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure you leave a like. Get yourself subscribed as well. And we will be back tomorrow with another double episode of our F1 Mighty Career Mode.
None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below. And yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.